Since its debut in 1950, Formula One has been the scene of multiple technological advances applied to automotive engineering. This has led to hundreds of changes and modifications and regulations, always focusing on delivering the best spectacle on the track while not neglecting safety issues. One of these changes, which remains controversial to this day, is related to refueling during the race. If you are fans of the sport, you will remember the era of the 90s and the 2000s when refueling during pit stops played a fundamental role in each team's strategies. However, since 2010, the FIA, as the regulatory body of the races, chose to indefinitely ban this practice. Therefore, today we will analyze why refueling is no longer done in Formula 1 races. The history of refueling in top-level motorsport dates back almost to the founding of the sport itself. Juan Manuel Fangio was the first driver to employ this technique as part of his race strategy to win the 1957 German Grand Prix. However, the widespread adoption of this practice did not occur until the early 1980s when the Brabham team discovered that their car could achieve faster lap times when starting with only half a tank of fuel. Although this practice was prohibited just a couple of years later, a decade later, in 1994, in-race refueling was fully permitted. The rationale behind this decision was to make the races more entertaining by introducing a new decisive factor in the strategies. Starting with less fuel benefited the drivers by allowing them to have lighter cars, resulting in higher speeds and greater freedom to attempt riskier maneuvers. For obvious reasons, the implementation of in-race refueling came hand-in-hand -hand with strict safety measures and protocols aimed at preventing any possible failures to the greatest extent possible. All hoses used had to meet the same specifications and feature various safety filters, in addition to limiting the fuel flow to prevent leaks. Despite all this and under the universal law that if something can go wrong, it will, the goal of having pit stops as short as possible inevitably led to human error. This resulted in several regrettable incidents such as the case at the 2009 Brazilian Grand Prix involving Kimi Raikkonen and Heike Kovalainen, as well as the controversial and widely known case of Jos Verstappen at the 1994 German Grand Prix. Another major controversy surrounding in-race refueling, which was decisive for the future of this practice, was the incident involving Brazilian driver Felipe Massa at the 2008 Singapore Grand Prix. These precedents led to regulations banning refueling from 2010 onwards and instead larger cars were allowed to accommodate fuel tanks with sufficient capacity to complete an entire race. Consequently, fuel management became an essential consideration from the engine's manufacturing stage which favored Formula 1 due to increasing concerns about sustainability and environmental efficiency. At the same time, other important factors that motivated this prohibition were economic and logistical aspects. As we saw in our video on the logistics of Formula 1, transporting additional equipment worldwide is quite a challenging task, leading to significantly increased transportation expenses. Therefore, despite the fact that refueling procedures could be quite safe and advantageous for both the spectacle and the strategies, the reduction in costs for the teams was more significant. Currently, one of the main issues in Formula 1 is the size that the cars have grown to, making them the heaviest in their history. Because of this, the idea of reintroducing refueling during races gained traction in 2021, even being advocates for drivers like Lewis Hamilton, with the aim of reducing several tens of kilograms from the cars, allowing them to be smaller, lighter, and faster. However, this idea has been completely discarded since, as we've seen, safety and logistics would have greatly been affected. Additionally, in terms of the spectacle, there is evidence that the average number of overtakes during seasons when refueling was legal is much lower. This is because strategies would play a more important role than actual on-track maneuvers, making the sport less entertaining to watch. It's also important to note that its reintroduction would mark the end of one of the most iconic and representative aspects of the modern era of F1, which are the super-fast pit stops. This would mean losing the excitement and visual spectacle of two-second stops, reverting back to the 20-second stop seen in the seasons of the 90s and 2000s. We'd like to hear your opinion. Do you think refueling should return to Formula 1? Do you believe it would truly make the races more interesting? Would you prefer extremely fast pit stops or strategic refueling? Share your thoughts in the comments below.